Hi friends, Dr. Sitesh Roy, US board certified immunologist, allergist and asthma specialist coming to you from Mumbai, India on this special about coronavirus COVID-19 infections which has been caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. As we know already there are over 1.25 lakh cases worldwide with over 4,500 deaths and the disease is very much in India with about 79 cases and our first fatality today in a man from Karnataka who had high heart disease as well as asthma and succumbed to what is believed to be a comorbid condition with the coronavirus infection. So this disease is very much on our doorstep and we need to know what the symptoms are of it. The classic presenting symptoms are fever and a dry cough. The receptors for coronavirus COVID-19 infections are in the lungs primarily. There are a few receptors in the upper airways presenting with breathlessness, presenting with body pain, tiredness or weakness and in less than 5 to 10 percent patients presenting with a sore throat or a, a nasal symptom. Very few patients also present with gastrointestinal symptoms including diarrhea or nausea or abdominal pain. However, the primary symptoms are fever and dry cough and that's what we need to look for. With these symptoms, there are some high-risk groups that are most affected. Amongst them are individuals with cardiovascular disease and hypertension, diabetes mellitus, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cancer, immunosuppressive diseases, diseases like asthma and other respiratory diseases. Amongst these groups, again, the maximum number of problematic cases have been seen in adults between the ages of 30 and 80 with the highest fatality in the higher age ranges of 70 and 80. Also, children are not exempt from this disease, but the chance of children getting a severe infection seems to be quite low. In terms of the presenting symptoms, uh, it is important to know that up to 60-70% patients who present with fever go on. The remaining 90% including would be presenting with fever later during the admission. So in some cases there are some variations and also there seems to be what can be a biphasic nature of the disease where a person seems to be getting better and then later gets sick again. Also, the typical incubation period of this disease is 2-5 to five days but the incubation period can last anywhere up to 14 or even 27 days as, be, as has been seen in some select cases around the world. So that brings us to what can we do if a patient is in these high risk categories and presents with the right kind of symptoms. The treatment so far, there are no officially approved drugs for this disease, but we do know that the anti-malarial chloroquine has been shown to be beneficial in some cases so has the anti-flu medication Oseltamivir has been shown to be beneficial and as a second line HIV drug Lopinavir and Ritonavir have been used as has been seen recently in the Italian couple treated in Jaipur and with several publications that have already been seen across the globe. There are several vaccines but those will take a minimum six months to even reach anywhere close to human uh, practical application. And so at this point of time, do not get into any of the myths that are going on around about the treatment and focus on practical management. In terms of what can be done with these diagnosed cases, isolation is the key, contact tracing is the next step, followed by actual treatment, and then with that research and mitigation of this pandemic that has already taken 120 countries and so many people under its hold. We do have to recognize that as has been mentioned in multiple places for prevention, hand washing with soap and water at least for 20 seconds, using an alcohol based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol and the use of certain um, face masks, N95 masks or surgical masks where indicated. So for an individual with cough, cold, 
uh, all these symptoms, the use of mask is very much recommended. For healthcare professionals, the use of mask is very strongly recommended. The general public, only if they are going into high risk situations, would need to use a mask. This brings us to the point of trying to keep to ourselves and avoiding large gatherings of groups where these viruses can spread. There have been no super spreaders in India, but in Korea, one woman was able to give the infection to 50 people within one sitting at a church. So we really need to be careful about avoiding areas where people may be sick or distancing ourselves by at least uh, two meters from people who are coughing or sneezing uh, so that we do not acquire an infection that's a respiratory infection. With all these precautions, and with the right kind of approach and diagnosis and with most importantly self-quarantining if someone is a high risk case with the right kind of travel history or exposure and with the right kind of medical services that we can provide these patients in a timely manner I think that we can easily get over this pandemic and do the best that we can with giving our patients and our families the best chance to recover from this pandemic. So thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe, take care and wish you the best.